Hi, my name is Kaylin Helmick and I'm an Applications Engineer from Go Engineer. And in this video, I will be sharing how to use the Property Tab Builder. But before we begin using the Property Tab Builder, I first want to explain what the Property Tab Builder is used for. So let's go to File, and then down to Properties. And here we can enter in various information about our part. And here I've entered in things like my part number, who the part was made by, whether or not the part was approved, the manufacturing method, as well as the material. So this is great to store this kind of information within your part, but instead of coming in here and entering all these values in manually, it might be beneficial to do this in a way that's more appealing to your engineers to ensure that this information is being entered in every time. So that's kind of what the property tab builder is used for. It allows you to enter in all this information in a way that kind of acts more like a survey. And so let's go ahead and check out what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and then go over to my custom properties tab on the right side of my screen. And here I have an example set up. And so now it's a simple process of just editing the part number from here. We can change um, our drop down box and I feel like it's just a lot more intuitive and easy to use and I feel like it helps to provide consistency in your work because I know that as an engineer I would much rather fill out this information than fill out this information. And so it kind of just eliminates any confusion and you can customize this to have exactly the information that you need. Now that we know what the property tab builder can be used for, let's go ahead and go through an example of how to use it. So to open the property tab builder, we go to the search bar on our computer and type property tab builder and it should pop up for us. Let's go ahead and click it to open it. And now we have the Property Tab Builder application open in front of us here. On the left side of this application, we have our various question formats. In our center column, we have a preview of what our Properties tab will look like. And on the right side of the screen, we can customize the different items we put into our custom properties. So we're going to go ahead and rename our group box part properties because all of our questions that we're going to put into this group box are all related to the properties of our part. And let's go ahead and put a text box style question in here. And for my text box style question, I'm going to do part number. So a text box is good if you want to enter in your own information like part number. And so I'm going to make sure my caption and my name both say part number. And for the type, I want my engineer to enter text, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as text. And I will also leave the value blank because I want my engineer to enter in their own value. It's very important to remember to pick the configuration style you would like. In my case, I want it to show on the custom tab um, rather than just on the configuration specific tab. And so for all of my different questions, I'm going to be clicking this button. Um, in addition to a text box, I'm going to also put in a list option. And for my list, I'm going to be asking who the part was drawn by. And for the name, I will also put drawn by. And the style will be list. And in my list, when I click on this drop down arrow, I want it to show me all the different engineers that work in my office. So under values, I will want to put the names of the various engineers that I work with. And once again, I'm clicking this button. I will also add a checkbox and this checkbox will ask whether or not the part was approved. So approved for the caption and the name. And once again, show on customs tab and Finally, I'm going to add some radio buttons and these radio buttons will ask the manufacturing method. So how will we manufacture our part? Manufacturing method. We have three different ways of manufacturing. We can 3D print. We can injection mold and we can machine. And for my value, I will put the same information that is in my label.
Once again, I'll remember to click show on custom tab. So that's it. That's all the information that I want to add for now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. To save, we just click this drop down arrow and then click save as. And then it's important to remember where we are saving our template. So in my case, I like to save it under templates. I'm going to name it custom properties template example. Notice that the file type is SOLIDWORKS part properties template. I'm going to click save and then I can minimize my property tab builder. And now when I go over to the custom properties tab and I click on it, we can see that what we created is still not here. And so to make it appear here, we need to click somewhere on this area and then press the F5 key. And the F5 key will refresh for us and bring in anything that we've created. If we have multiple templates, it'll ask us which one we would like to use, so that's useful too. If for some reason this is not popping up for you, make sure that you're clicking in this area and then pressing the F5 key. If this still doesn't work, then let's go ahead and go to options and double check to make sure our settings are set up correctly. So after we go to system options, we will want to go down to file locations. And then you want to go to this drop down box here and go down to custom property files. And you want to make sure that this is the same place that you saved your template just now. And if it isn't, you can click edit all and then go down to custom property files and change this link here. And then click save and okay. And then go back in here and click and then click F5 again and see if it appears. If that still doesn't work, you may want to try exiting out of SOLIDWORKS completely and then reopening SOLIDWORKS and trying again. That has also worked for me in the past when I have not been able to get it to load. So those are some troubleshooting tips. So now that it's here, we can enter in our part information. We can throw in a part number. We can choose who it was drawn by. I'm going to go ahead and check approved. And then I'm going to say that my part should be machined. And then I'm going to click apply. And then when I click apply, when I go to my file properties, we can see that all my information has been populated here. So notice that my information is getting populated to my custom tab and not my configuration specific tab. If you want to change where it's going to end up, the way that you do that is by going back into your property tab builder and changing your configuration setting. And so I set all of mine to be shown on the custom tab, which is why it is all being brought into the custom tab here. One last thing that I would like to share is how you can link your values to SOLIDWORKS values. So just like you would use this drop down to select a value that already exists in your part, you can do that through the property tab builder as well. And so let's say that we wanted another text box in here and this text box was for our material type. And so here we can find material and then the way that we link it is by selecting this drop down list for value and we can select a wide variety of different values and I'm going to go ahead and do SOLIDWORKS material and for my configuration I'm going to make sure it says show on custom tab. Once again I'll hit save and I'm going to minimize this and then I'm going to go back, I'm going to cancel out of this first actually and then I'm going to go back to my custom properties tab and notice that it's not here so I'm going to click F5 and then it appears now. And then I'm going to select my material from this list. And notice that it is giving me the option to select all the materials that are, are already in SOLIDWORKS. So we can actually click Edit Material and we are brought to this whole list that's in SOLIDWORKS, including our own custom materials. So I'm going to go ahead and select a material and click Apply and Close. And notice that not only did it bring that material here, but it applied it to the part as well. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and we can see that our material is listed here now too. So that's how we can use linked values through your property builder as well. That concludes my video on how to use the property tab builder. Once again, my name is Kaylin Helmick from Go Engineer. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out some of our other videos on our channel. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.